Economically, Venezuela has collapsed with severe shortages of electricity, food, gas and medicine. Politically, the country's fate is unclear, with President Nicolas Maduro facing off against the U.S.-backed National Assembly President Juan Guaido. Maduro has clung to power largely through the loyalty of key military and intelligence figures. But in April, some of those allies flipped, leading to a failed attempt to oust him. One of them is now in the U.S., and he spoke with our own Nick Schifrin. For decades, General Manuel Ricardo Christopher Figuera was the loyal soldier to the Venezuelan regime. And last year, he became the feared intelligence chief whose agents punished the regime's opponents. But he says he saw the shortages of food, Medicina. patients protesting and dying from a shortage of medicine, and children playing in the dark because of a shortage of power. And now he blames the country's ills on the corruption of President Nicolas Maduro and his family. Having worked firsthand with Nicolas Maduro, after telling him about all the corruption that I saw, I realized there was no will, too much evil and too much desire for power. Nicolas Maduro's son has a personal assistant who has several companies that contract with the state. It seems that the family of Nicolas Maduro was benefiting economically from their power and taking money away from the government. They use the platform of the state. They use the Central Bank of Venezuela to pull gold out of the country. I have called the system of government a criminal enterprise. Why? Because all contribute to corruption. They are all accomplices. I have also apologized because I have some responsibility. I was part of that regime. But once I realized the mess of the entire tragedy for the people of Venezuela, I decided to step forward and oppose this criminal enterprise. Do you feel like you did enough to resist initially? I was part of a structure that is not in favor of the interests of the people. And I could have done more. He did more on April the 30th when Juan Guaido announced a revolt. The plan required two senior officials to flip, Supreme Court Justice Mikhail Moreno and Defense Minister Vladimir Padrino Lopez. Why do you think it failed? The excessive ambitions of Mikhail Moreno. He wanted to be president, but that was not in the plan. What was proposed was to oust Maduro and appoint a new National Electoral Council call elections, and try to reorganize the state and free state institutions. Today, Figuera is in the U.S. He asked us not to disclose the exact location for fear of regime retribution. After you fled, was your deputy killed? I placed him at the head of delicate and sensitive investigations. Surely they discovered that he had sensitive information and made it seem he broke into a motel and shot himself. That was a simulated suicide. Do you think that he was killed in order to send you a message? No solo a mí. Not only just me. It sent a message to me and all who dare to go against Nicolas Maduro's criminal enterprise. But Figuera admits he facilitated that enterprise. The UN recently detailed thousands of government human rights violations, such as torture and kidnapping, including by the intelligence institution he led, the Sabine. Y cargo con esa cruz. I carry the cross on my back because there are many people who have suffered at the hands of the people of that institution. I do not like to address the issue of torture because I think it's very grotesque. We have seen films, we read books of what bad people do, evil people, when they have a prisoner. Did you mistreat people? And do you think about that? And do you regret that? Sí, desde luego. Yes, let me repeat. I am sorry, and I do have regrets. I've asked forgiveness from people because I was part of those structures that are supporting Maduro. Although I did not directly order torture or torture anyone. Was there any debate within the Maduro regime about how to treat some of these prisoners and how to treat their political opponents? No. La orden la da. No. The orders were Nicolas Maduro directly. He gives the order. Why should we believe you? Why should we believe your story if you participated in some of these acts? Bueno, la mayoría de las personas que dicen eso. The majority of the people who say that are journalists or social media influencers, or they have some political agenda outside the country. And it's difficult for them to believe me because I had no contact with anyone outside my country. In fact, I am the last military personnel they expected would turn against Maduro. You had sanctions on you by the United States, accusing you of torture. The United States, have, the United States has lifted those sanctions now. I am announcing today that the United States of America 
is removing all sanctions on General Manuel Christopher Figuera effective immediately. Do you think that the U.S. should forgive any of the people who have committed some of these acts so long as they work to oppose Maduro? Son dos cosas distintas. I have not committed any crime. I was punished for being part of a criminal structure, but I have not committed a crime. People who have committed crimes must be brought to justice. I know there are accusations towards me in The Hague, but I am willing to appear before the court. They have to prove that I did those things. Maduro remains in power largely thanks to military support and the support of allies, Russia, the Iranian-backed militant group Hezbollah, and most importantly, Cuba. Did you have to go through a senior Cuban official in Caracas in order to communicate with Maduro? I had relations with a colonel who was on the first ring of security for Nicolás Maduro. Safety equipment was provided by Raúl Castro to Maduro. At first there were few men, maybe 15. Now they've informed me after the events of April 30 that number expanded and there are about 200 Cubans dedicated to the safety of Maduro. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the U.S. have led an international pressure campaign against Maduro, including heavy sanctions. And hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans have poured into the streets to support Guaido. It hasn't been enough to oust Maduro. On the subject of protests, it has not been strong enough because people go out to protest, but then they have to stop to survive. Because their salaries are not enough for food, they cannot afford to dress. Why do you think there have been no attempts since April 30th to try and oust Maduro? Because of fear, they are afraid. Maduro accuses U.S. intelligence of plotting a coup. Figuera says they're not, but he is cooperating with them. How are they cooperating with people like you in order to get rid of Maduro? By providing information that they have about financial movements, they can corroborate some things I've said. With accurate information, they can contribute to Maduro's departure from power so he can be tried before international justices. Have the U.S. intelligence officials who you still speak to gone one step further and supported a direct intervention against Maduro in Venezuela? That's not the idea. It's a problem we Venezuelans have to solve. However, Maduro, with his attitude of contempt for the people of Venezuela, he is legitimizing any action we have to do to get out. There are many stories that CIA has many people in Venezuela, Americans and Venezuelans, and that they have considered sending guns into Venezuela and contributing to the violent overthrow of Maduro. No creo que sea más I do not think that it is more intense than the activity of Cuban intelligence or the intelligence of Chinese or Russian intelligence. Later, he asked to provide a firmer denial of CIA involvement inside Venezuela. No, no, no lo hay. No, there is not. The United States has been very careful because in their history there have been problems. Despite Venezuela's conditions today, he still defends his original mentor, former President Hugo Chavez. Chavez played a political role in a stellar moment in history, but that's now been left behind. Maduro uses tricks, and he who has betrayed Chavez is Maduro. I'm a Venezuelan, Bolivarian, fighter for justice and a believer of democracy. So do you think democracy could be restored in Venezuela? Sí, por eso estamos luchando. Yes. That is why we are fighting. That's why I dared to leave my country, to seek help to restore democracy as written in our Constitution. General Christopher Figuera, thank you very much, sir. Gracias a ti. Thank you, sir.